Okay, George, why'd you call us to the Fox HQ? And why the PlayStation avatars? Forget the avatars. Anyway, I brought you guys here for two reasons. One, I heard you two had some involvement with today's subject, and two, Autumn went on a trip to Honolulu, so I can't contact her. Look at me, guys! I'm Star- <coughs> Wait, how am I flying? Okay, I swear it was set up and I will! Then how do you explain this? Fuck. Well, good thing I obviously had nothing to do with this. <laughs> yeah, about that, Donnie. I've heard from an aerodynamic winged and beaked specimen that you basically led Jack to make this video. And how would I have done that? I mean, you did tell me that he didn't like Animat's Ratchet and Clank video about 11 billion times. I thought it was 12 billion times. Well, what would that have to do with Jack? You showed him the video. Oh. Motherfuck! So I guess I can explain what really happened. Those who came to my channel would know that I did a co-op commentary with Pikmin Trick on One Wicked Dash on his commentary on Electro Dragon 505, otherwise known as Animat, who made a review of the Ratchet and Clank movie. In case you want the short version, it sucked. But apparently, he wasn't the only one who wanted to tackle it. All thanks to an outlining motherfucker, Jack Stevenson made a video on the same review. And to at least clear up as to who Jack is, he's a countdown maker who, from what I've heard, isn't that good and, well, Master TP10 covered two of his videos, I think that should say something. I'm admittedly partially responsible for this video's existence. Obviously! As I didn't even like Animat's original video. I showed him the XL of the video, then Jack found out about it in a Skype group chat, and they were going to co-op. Then she didn't want to do the com anymore due to being unsatisfied with the script. For good reason. Then he created the beast that we are tackling. As for my involvement in this train wreck, Jack and I were in the same Skype group, and he asked me to proofread his script, since, at the time, I had two solid commentaries under my belt. At 1 o'clock in the morning. Needless to say, there were one or two errors that I missed. Really? Just two? Okay, maybe three... Anyway, I want to also clarify to Jack that this comes to help him out. So, any sort of jab or potshot is just for the sake of comedy, and we are not malicious towards him. That said, this commentary... <sighs> I wish critics had better reasons for hating on the Ratchet & Clank movie. I mean, what's the deal? Just because it's based off a video game series doesn't mean it sucks. Okay, cool. Except one problem. Were you trying to say that video game movies get hated on simply because they're video game movies? Um, no. Video game movies don't get much good attention because, most of the time, video game movies are adapted poorly. Just take a look at films such as any video game film that Uwe Boll directed. Did those suck because they're based on video games? Fuck no, they're bad because they're badly written. Another thing I'd like to point out is that you don't show anything that says the critics dislike the film because video game movie. All you show is the ratings, which doesn't tell us any of what you just claimed. You can't use something and pretend that it's evidence. You have to use actual evidence or else the audience will have no reason to believe you. Also, one major issue here is that this small bit paints you out as a blind fan unable to accept any negative opinions on this movie. Whether intentional or not, this introduction does not give your viewers the best impression on your mindset when commentating on this review. The worst part is that I actually pointed this out while half asleep when you asked me to look at your script, and you kept this mistake in anyway. We're in the first 11 seconds, and already we- Donnie! You're about to do a cliché. Am I wrong, though? Yeah. Look at all these reviews. Oh, look, a positive- Oh, look, a negative one! Why are there black fucking borders in the video when you clearly show later that you are perfectly capable of covering the whole screen? Or at the very least, you could have made a joke saying, Oh shit, I don't have a background. Better get one, be consistent! There is also the fact that he scrolled past several reviews that were possibly more negative than Animat's. Oh, but you watched the one positive review, so that's good to know. A few moments later... Looks like I got some steam to let off. Oh, so you do have a background. Where was this in the past few seconds? Where the script came from, George? Up his fucking ass. Time to experiment! <laughs> Why do I feel like I've been here before? Now, I'm gonna skip ahead a minute, mostly because the first minute is just a bit of history leading up to the eventual review. It isn't bad, there's just nothing to say. So when I'm gonna skip a segment of this video, you'll see this. 
NEXT! That's nice and all, but it hurts you in the long run. While it's mostly true that the beginning of Animat's review is unimportant for your points, it's important to keep in mind about Animat not playing the Ratchet games for later. There are points where you're inconsistent with showing the skip card when you're skipping. Plus, why are you explaining what a skip card is in the first place? To accommodate the viewers that lack common sense? The story. Nice to know that your category transitions have remained incredibly bland and slow. Just a fading screen with a slightly cropping image and stationary text. Come on, this is 2016, not 2009. Flare up a little bit. Add a clip from a movie or a trailer instead of having a stationary picture. Add some effects to your text. Add a small music clip. Is that too much to ask? Why are you making a mountain out of an ant hill? It's not that it looks bad, it's just simple. This isn't a countdown where the transitions could use a clip to liven it up. In this type of video, a simple transition would work since throughout the whole video we're looking at trailer footage anyway. Plus, what would really be the purpose of having them for the transitions if it happens within the segments? However, when you take that plot and put it into a movie, where the story is one of the most important factors Wait, here. what? Did you just skip over Animat explaining how video game plots can be ignored if the game can be fun? With how you did it, anyone who had not seen the original video will be confused as to what Animat is bringing up. Along with that, even if they saw the original video, they will notice this inconsistency very easily. Like me. First one where your dash skips a lot of important stuff, now you. Then there is no excuse for being lazy with it, and what happened here is just terrible. In fact, only a fraction of the movie actually contains what seems to be a plot. But even at that, it's only during the first act when Ratchet wants to be a Galactic Ranger, and the movie is so dependent on using cliches that you can immediately know what will happen during the rest of the movie in just the first five minutes. Considering how it only gives us about 30, maybe 40 minutes of story, and the rest is just nothing but one big space mission, this is the kind of writing where the last time I've experienced it was in planes. And you know when you're bad at writing, when you're at the same level as a cheap spin-off of Cars. I will admit that the story could have been better, but you don't ever explain why the film's story is non-existent, why it was just one big space mission, and furthermore, why it was comparable to the planes. So why did you make these claims if you're not going to bother backing them up? The problem I have with what you said is that Animat just described how the story was structured. Should a review need to go into minute detail about absolutely everything even when he's also trying to bring in other aspects of the story? I'm sorry, but you're expecting way too much from Animat, especially since his regular reviews are what he saw from the movie that recently came out. Plus, seeing as I was a person who not only saw both reviews, but also saw both films, yeah, I know. Animat isn't too far off with his comparison. With planes, there is little focus given to the characters and they rush right into the race within 30 minutes. And Ratchet has the same issue as Animat described. Also, have you taken into consideration that even though the movie tried to have a story that translated into movie material, that it also wanted to play it safe? Here's what I mean. Previous video game adaptations like Blood Rain and the Super Mario Bros. movie blew for having a story that was not loyal to their source material, and tried to go all out to create something that, in the end, didn't work. The way I see it, having a simple story for a first outing in film territory is a smart move. It's not a smart move to play it safe, because if the first film wouldn't have a strong start, then there wouldn't even be a second. And considering the piss poor amount of money in the box office, even with how small the budget is, there won't even be a second movie. Hell! There probably won't even be a Sly Cooper movie. Not only that, but if the story's too simple, then oftentimes it'll be too predictable. And if it doesn't do anything to twist the concept or make it more entertaining, then less people would be willing to watch it. You know, just to see how things go and make future movies even better. But even then, the movie did not just copy the story from the original game. It had a similar premise, sure, but it threw in new twists and turns that went under your scope unrealized. Oh, so the plot follows the original game to the point where it plays it safe. Except when it throws in these twists and turns. Also, Animat didn't notice these massive changes because he never played any of the games. So of course he wouldn't mention any of them. Why should he have to mention any of the games when he's looking at the movie? Was there some rule pass recently where you have to experience the material before watching the film adaptation? Well, shit. I guess I'll have to read all the novels before I can watch The Hunger Games or Lord of the Rings. Or Howard the Duck for the Marvel Cinematic Universe! Not to mention, a lot of the events in the story, like Orcs Redemption, weren't in the original game, but rather games that followed suit. It incorporated these to form a story that is good enough for movie material and faithful to the series it's based on. Okay, but was it executed well? Nope! Just because a movie has a good concept, that doesn't mean it's good. It has to be well executed or else it will fall apart. And even if it was- BURN IT! BURN IT! BURN IT! BURN IT! BURN IT TO THE GROUND! Should we stop him? At this rate, he'll burn this whole building to the ground. Nah, this is fun to watch. I'm getting my popcorn. And even if it was a standalone, it'd still be just fine, because while it probably is simple in hindsight, 
They legitimately made it more interesting as the movie went on, with the whole business of the heroes being torn up through words rather than action, and a plot twist with the villains, which I won't spoil. Sure, the elements of the movie are understood more if you've played some games within the series, and I will admit it wasn't a good move to make the movie understood more by fans. So you admit the problem's there. So how is Animat invalid by default? You literally just said that making the movie be more understood by fans is dumb, and yet, a guy like Animat, one who hasn't played a Ratchet game prior in reviewing the movie as is, cannot talk stuff about the movie since he has to play the games, which is... Gah! God damn, these interjections were long. Like my list of complaints with this commentary. But then you also have the humor, which you can really tell that it's trying to give the film a really meta and snarky tone. But it forgets to do one thing, be funny. And because of that, it gives a bit of an annoying tone throughout the film. It's like a guy who subtly laughs at his own bad jokes. It's not enough to scream out, shut up, but it gives you a good reason why not to like him. Ignoring the whole humor is subjective argument, you again forgot to elaborate. All you say is that the humor's meta and snarky. Do I need to burn something again? Donnie, no. Which doesn't give the viewer a good idea of what you mean. Furthermore, you don't even show any jokes you found unfunny. You need something to prove your point. You can't just say that while playing trailer footage that contributes nothing to your argument. You need to show a joke you found unfunny or tell us one of them. Not just expect us to take your word for it without any evidence. Your audience is not a bunch of sheep. You know, with copyright being such a minefield for everyone on this site, you think Jack would know that using anything other than trailer footage would possibly lead to this video getting a strike, right? Also, Animat did explain how the jokes felt snarky and metaphorical. The okay, let me step in. He was saying how it's like a guy who tries really hard to be funny and laughs at his own jokes. You know, if he actually analyzed his point more, then you wouldn't be saying this. But, with all that said though, I do have a feeling that the film is not meant to impress critics like me or for the general public. It has one target audience and one target audience only, and that is the fans of the franchise. This can be completely debunked using personal experiences. Oh, a good please, chunk of my real God, life friends no. don't have a lot of experience with Ratchet and Clank and enjoyed the movie just fine. Heck, one of them even said the movie was an underdog and really deserved more praise. And I think they go under the general public area. Yeah, he went there. He just said that because his friends liked the film, that means Animat is... wrong? How? Just saying that your friends liked it means absolutely nothing. Seriously, personal reasons, especially in this scenario, don't work whatsoever. Just because people outside the target audience enjoyed it, that doesn't mean that everyone outside or inside of that group will enjoy it. Hey guys, my friends at high school unironically like the high school musical films. Are they good movies? Jokes aside, Angry Joe and his two friends went to watch the film and hated it. To put insult to injury, they saw two other people in the same theater who watched the movie and looked bored out of their minds. Hell, this ridiculous logic could be used to discredit good movies, so really, what's the logic here? Not only does this movie take its time to introduce many small elements screaming out, Hey, remember this from the games? But it also throws in many PlayStation references to please the gaming audience. Um, where's the PlayStation reference? Is it here? Nope. Is it here? Guess not. Is it here? Nope. You told a fact about the movie itself and failed to present anything proving it and instead just played a random clip from the trailer. If you're not allowed to use clips from the movie because of copyright, why not just tell one of the many references in this movie? There are several of them, but you presented none of them and instead added a random trailer clip that contributed nothing. GG. You do realize that you got onto him for not showing clips earlier, and now you're saying that it'd be difficult because of copyright? Not only that, but the movie was still in theaters at the time of the review's release, so there was no way for him to get more clips. You should have cut that earlier point out. BE CONSISTENT! On top of that, what would seeing the exact PlayStation reference really do to help the review? He mentioned the PlayStation references as nothing more than a side note. It wasn't really major, so he briefly mentioned it and moved on. Why are you getting on his case for extremely small things? The only 
thing that I can give this credit for is that at least the animation is pretty good. Even if I haven't played the games, I can tell the overall look and design of the characters are very faithful to how they appear in the games. Considering that this is a sci-fi flick, it does have some things to its advantage. The character designs are pretty creative and bring out some unique and fun-looking results, and it does use a lot of the weapons and gadgets to its potential. If only they were subtler about them instead of pointing a giant arrow to them saying that it's a reference to the games. Also, I will say that even the character animation is well done. They don't have the best reputation, but the animators at Rainmaker do show that they have talent. Not to mention the other elements in the visuals are well done, like the textures, the lighting, and especially the effects. Hey Jack, buddy, where are you? You got the whole commentary thing to do and stuff? Uh, Donnie, did you scare him away with your little burning fit earlier? What? I couldn't do that! If I can say something, you could have sped this up. Would have saved a lot of time and not have this drag out. Just saying. However, now that the good portions are out of the way, there are some things that could be problematic here. The one issue that seems more of a distraction with the visuals is that it looks like it wants to be Star Wars. What in the name of- What? You're actually commenting on how it wants to be Star Wars? Um, no. It wants to be a representation of its own franchise. Star Wars and Ratchet and Clank share almost nothing in common aside from both being sci-fi films taking place in immense galaxies. If we're going by your judgment, it'd be perfectly fine to say the Silent Hill movie was trying hard to be Saw. Screw me. Hold up, sonny boy. Let him finish first. No, Jack! Never! You don't have my consent! Every place that Ratchet and the Galactic Rangers go to feel like they've been lifted directly from Star Wars. So it takes away some of the originality that the franchise would offer. Would offer? What the actual heck do you know about originality in the franchise since you haven't played any of the games? Jipoko to malo. Majopoko Ratchet to makaje drone. Eh? Jack, he wasn't accusing the Ratchet and Clank series as a whole with ripping off Star Wars. Animat is still talking about the Ratchet and Clank film and is probably just complaining about how the film specifically might have borrowed several ideas from another sci-fi film. While we're on the subject, if we're going by your logic of every location feels like it was ripped from Star Wars, we can draw up comparisons between Star Wars and literally every movie that came out after and even before it. Does every film that has an immense atmosphere and with different themed areas automatically count as a Star Wars ripoff? Because that's what your argument is telling your viewers. You might not have meant it that way, but that's what you're saying with that point. Next! I want to bring something up that can take away anything you can get out of Jack's argument. During the part that Jack skipped out, it showed a clip from the movie in Metropolis. For those who have seen my commentary on One Wicked Dash, I pointed this out when he said that the movie has no visual comparison with Star Wars. However, all I did was point the clip initially. Now, allow me to go further with that point I made before. In the clip that Animat plays, one can get a good grasp of how Ratchet and Clank can take some elements away from Star Wars. More specifically, Episode 2, Attack of the Clones. In the beginning bits of Attack of the Clones, there was the huge city with flying cars going all around the place. In Ratchet and Clank, Metropolis is a huge city with flying cars going all around the- You see what I mean? Sure, not everything Ratchet does is like Star Wars, but there are times when it's really evident. Bottom line, learn to analyze, you're not good at it. Also, not only does it try, and fail, to be a comedy, but it also tries to incorporate many action scenes, which I guess are the parts where the player would do something in the games. They could have worked and be effective, but the problems are that 1. The design of the enemies look too goofy to be taken seriously, and 2. There is no feeling of investment towards the characters, and trust me, I'll get to that later. Goofy enemy design in a Ratchet and Clank form of media? Gee, that's a first for the series. Actually, it isn't. It's been a staple of the series since day one. He hasn't played the games. How is he supposed to know? He shouldn't have to research the games to understand the movie, because the movie is supposed to introduce new people to Ratchet and Clank, while fans can still enjoy it. But even if you found them too goofy, give some explanation. You viewers don't have a good idea of what too goofy means in this case, so you gotta give some sort of detail as to what makes them too goofy for your tastes. Your audience is not a bunch of Mr. Zircons either. Well, that's a nice white background on that Mr. Zircon pic. I mean, it's not like I can find a PNG of that character on Google Images. Oh wait, never mind. I'm more wanting to point out how he's saying that Animat is treating his fans like they're a bunch of Mr. Zircons. So you're telling me that Animat is treating his fans like they're tiny robots who do wisecracking insults and shoot constantly? Look, buddy, you try to defend this movie, yet you don't know the basic personality of a well-known character in the series. Good job. Wow, Animat's fans sound badass. Yup, they sure are. And when he said he'll get to the investment in the characters later, remember that this review has been failing so far. And just imagine what that'll be like. <laughs> Jack, you're not supposed to tell the audience what to think. 
If Animat's review is as bad as you're claiming it to be, then your viewers would come to that conclusion themselves. Even if this was unintentional, by doing this you're coming off as really condescending to your audience. And even then, you're doing a piss poor job of showing that he's failing. Your commentary is the thing that's failing right now, for fuck's sake, Jack! But the biggest problem of this movie is how it all came out in the rendering. If the rendering was a lot better, this film would have looked fantastic. Um, care to explain what you mean by rendering? You left that complaint incredibly vague to the point where most people are going to have no idea what you're talking about. The footage you show doesn't do you justice either, as someone could see this and think it looks just fine. You've got to explain what you mean instead of leaving us in the dark. We'll link a definition of rendering in the description below, but it's a process where you add color, shading, etc. to add images onto a screen. Meaning that he's saying stuff like the color and shading could have been done better. Also, to kind of take a few pages from the Flamicon, the general aspects that Animated was alluding to when it comes to rendering was to stuff like the bloom effect or certain materials, textures not looking as good as they should, or in certain cases, unnatural movement. This is further emphasized with the fact that the movie was aired in theaters and it was stretched onto a much larger screen, making these visual problems worse. But instead, it makes the overall visuals a bit sloppy, and instead of a movie, it looks more like, well, a cutscene powered by a gaming console. You actually have a problem with a video game based movie looking like a video game? No, you're not getting your media clip. That was an incredibly stupid point to make. You wanna know why? You missed Animat's point! He was saying that with how the rendering came out, it didn't look as good as it should, and how it looks like something you would see in a cutscene in a video game, rather than, oh I don't know, a movie! Hell, Animat wasn't complaining that it looked like a video game, he was complaining that it looked so close to the game counterpart that odds are it was ripped from one of the more recent Ratchet and Clank games. In fact, these clips look so close to the games it would appear that this movie was just reworked cutscenes from the 2016 remake of Ratchet & Clank 1. It's actually used around 20 minutes of the movie! Need proof? Here, we'll give it out! I'm happy to field all questions on their behalf. Dallas Wanamaker here. Uh, does this mean you'll be asking these two heroes to join the Rangers? Say what now? <laughs> oh, I don't... see why not? And that is how dumb luck helped a rookie Lombax take out a Blargian warship. Do you not realize how laughably stupid that sounds? Uh, I'll wait till later for that. I mean, sure, the animation in this movie isn't spectacular, but have you ever considered that they intentionally went with this animation style to pay respects to the original series? You're Most fighting a losing battle. Went Stop with the it! Visual style that was not a good representation to their series. So the fact that they went with this art style shows that they were trying to be faithful. But then again, you knew squat about the series going into this movie. I SAID STOP! So... Screw me again. No, Jack, I don't swing that way. You can have Donnie instead. No! Yeah. If these are the playable characters in the games, then I would probably never go play a single Ratchet & Clank game. I'll say this right now that the heroes of the film are purely despicable and poorly written. Starting with Ratchet, he begins as the old trope of the guy who wants more in life and dreams to be a galactic ranger. But once he becomes one, he's now just the bland hero who's so uninteresting, he would just blend in with the other characters for a good chunk of the movie. Explain! 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 Gee, his numerous failures at elaboration are making me sound like a broken record. Gee, I wonder why. You know, maybe, just maybe. You should have skipped more of the videos so you wouldn't have to repeat yourself so much! But he doesn't have a skip card. Oh. But his audience won't get how a skip card would work. Oh. As for Clank, he's basically a ripoff of C-3PO, but just take away any sort of personality. Back to the freaking Star Wars comparisons that make no sense, I see. Tell me, Matt, if Clank's a C-3PO knockoff, why can't Clank speak in six million languages? Why didn't C-3PO get in the center of any action scene and was always the one to cower away from them? Why do they have different personalities? You know, since you have almost 50k subscribers and lots of positive feedback, I expected you to be more professional instead of saying crap like this. And again, there are details right in front of you proving that statement completely wrong, but you didn't realize them. And also, you're the first person I've heard say this. It's almost like you're not thinking of professional criticisms and instead yanking random petty complaints out of your butt. Hmm. Maybe you are. That last one could apply to you too, you motherfucker. Guys, we have no credit. We only have 200 subscribers! We must literally bow before our lord and savior, Leafy is here. Chairman Drek is one of the villains that wants to blow up planets because let's rip off Star Wars some more and build a new planet because reasons. Last time I checked, Star Wars never had a plot of a villain wanting to build a whole planet by taking chunks of older ones, but rather every villain in Star Wars wished to take over the galaxy. As for the because reasons part, Drek wanted to build a new planet where he and everyone who helped him could live perfect lives on, as Drek 
absolutely hated living on his original planet. Again, the movie explains this and gives details to make it all clear that it's not just there to rip off Star Wars. How the crap are you this lazy to realize that? While I can agree that Drek's plan is not exactly like Darth Vader's plan in Star Wars, it does have some similarities between the two. Case in point, what do they use for both of their plans? A giant spaceship where the villains reside and they use the giant laser attached to it, destroying planets with it. And while you can't say that this is part of an already existing trope, the whole basis of blow up planet with giant laser is pretty evident between the two. There's also the fact that taken with no prior knowledge, this scene right here shows a planet being blown up like in a previously mentioned film, along with the fact that the older PS2 games emphasized that Trek was taking chunks from planets and not blowing them up. By the way, how would you take a chunk out of a planet if you went out of your way to blast it to smithereens beforehand? If you wanted to prove him wrong, then emphasize the actual difference between Ratchet and Clank and Star Wars. You could have said that just because two things are similar, that doesn't mean it's a ripoff. You had something you could have debunked, but you didn't. What. The. Fuck. Along with his tough robot assistant, Victor. But then there's Captain Quark. The most selfish, idiotic, hateable thing that this movie has to offer. Oh, so Quark is a lot like he was in the original game. Good to know, mate. I mean, it's not like they did that to be loyal to the franchise or anything. That's just absurd. Even for adaptation standards. But how would he know? Fuck it, let's just move on. What a coincidence that this is from Rainmaker, because he's like Scorched Supernova from Escape from Planet Earth incarnated into a video game character. Captain Quark debuted in the original Ratchet and Clank game in 2002. Escape from Planet Earth did not come out until 2013, so if anything, Scorched Supernova is early Captain Quark incarnated into a movie character. I don't even have to say anything. I can just play this. Except he's making the comparison with what Rainmaker, the animation studio, did before, not the franchise in general. You're right that Quark was created before Escape from Planet Earth, but his comparison isn't too far off, considering that Escape from Planet Earth came before the Ratchet movie. You know, it's really sad when an argument I made to someone else tackling the same video debunks you as well. You even watched the co-op commentary on One Wing of Dash, as evident by your comment on the video, so there's no fucking excuse for making the same point that was already debunked! How in the rotten Taco Bell shit did you miss this?! Are we even needed here? You seem to be discrediting your own points without us. Can we just put a long credit scene here and just call it a day? Nuh uh, we're finishing this. We have five minutes left on this beast. Along with his team of galactic idiots, all he does is be so stupid and act like he's the best at everything. I don't know, man. That sounds pretty faithful to me. Um, yeah, Master TP10? We have this clueless space ranger doing the know you. <laughs> yes. THE know you. Yeah, we'll send the bill for... 8 pesos. Um, aren't we in the US? I'm Mexican, you racist! Huh. Actually, that would explain this giant wall between us. He glorifies his stupidity by giving those who are smarter than him a really hard time like Hilaris, who is possibly the only tolerable character in this. And the saddest part about this guy is that he's so dumb and unlikable that it even makes me want to root for the villains. Dr. Nefarious has every right to become the Ranger's enemy for his poor treatment from them, and when the villains try to manipulate Quark, the plan is ridiculous, yet I can believe that it works because only someone that's as absent-minded as him can be dumb enough to fall for it. Seriously, is he like this in the games? How could anyone be excited for this if the characters are this unpleasant to sit through? You only seem to have a gigantic beef with Quark. Why will it make got too much focus on the film? But besides that, you only said that Ratchet was generic, Clank was a C-3PO knockoff, and Drek was just there to be evil. And you didn't give any evidence to back those up, unlike Quark where you tried to explain. And that shows that you barely paid attention to the rest of the cast. If you found the other characters unlikable, go over what you didn't like about them, instead of just lingering on one specific character. This entire video is not meant for you to hate on one character, it's for you to give your proper thoughts on the film as a whole. Give proper thoughts instead of overblowing these idiotic claims on one specific character! Well, he could have gone into more detail about the characters other than Quark, or at the very least just say, I find these other characters boring, unfunny, etc. You still overblew what Animat did! He did explain that he found Ratchet and Clank to be generic characters. And while it was a whoopsie in his part to say that all the heroes are despicable when it only applies to Quark, you still blew it out of proportion! Learn to be more honest with your audience! Well, he did over overblow how Wart is the worst final boss he ever faced, 
Ayo! Also, speaking in Animat's defense, the amount of time spent with Quark in the Ratchet and Clank games are few and far between, compared to this movie which lacked the gameplay portions to break out the story. In other words, he was listening to Quark a hell of a lot more than anyone who exclusively played the games would have, making a fun and endearing idiot wear out his welcome. Fast. It could be just the fact that I don't play the games, but after watching this, I don't think I can understand why anyone would be interested in the franchise. People don't get drawn towards a video game series because of its stories and characters, unless they're the selling point. They get drawn into a series because of its gameplay, and the gameplay and overall charm of the Ratchet and Clank series are what draw people towards it, myself included. Also, chances are you're drawn away from the franchise because the way you saw most things in this movie is incredibly absurd, especially when you start drawing comparisons between it and Star Wars. And are you seriously disinterested in the series just because of this movie? Seriously? That's like saying you're disinterested in the Mario series based off its film adaptation, or being disinterested in any of the Dragon Ball animes just based off your opinion of Dragon Ball Evolution. Regardless of how loyal adaptations can be to their source material, they don't describe or define them. So quit shaming the fans just because you didn't like one movie in this long-lasting franchise of games! He didn't shame any of the techie fans, you dumbass. All he was saying was that the movie gave him bad first impressions for the game. It doesn't mean he was going after the fans. Maybe he could have watered that better, but that's clearly not what he actually meant. And this is where I'm going to stop with this video, since all that's worth noting in the end is that he gave the film a 4 out of 10 and the animat seal of garbage, the latter of which doesn't make any sense since the worst a 4 out of 10 can get is just bad in my eyes. Um... Have you seen many of Animat's reviews? Usually his rating system is easy to understand. If a film gets a 9 or higher, it would get the seal of approval. Conversely, if it gets below a 5, it gets the seal of garbage. Plus, you saying that 4 out of 10 is just bad and you say that the seal of garbage won't work for it, will not help the fact that is what it's for! What should get the seal of garbage? A 2 out of 10 or lower? Well, that would make only films in the caliber of Norm of the North a garbage tier film then. Hell, it'll probably end with several bad movies getting a free pass. Foreshadowing. So, final thoughts. <sighs> Look, I've got no problem with you not liking the Ratchet and Clank movie. Don't fucking lie. How you made your points in this commentary seem to tell me otherwise, whether it was intended or not. We can skip something! Woo! The thing that I'm getting at is, if you want to give a proper explanation as to why you didn't like a movie, you have to make points that have a decent sense of logic behind them, and analyze each and every detail of the movie to make sure your points don't sound idiotic. If you want to know what I mean by this, watch Chris Duckman's review of the movie. He did a much better job giving proper criticism and valid points. Again, you unintentionally made it so that you only went after this review because Animat's review was negative. I say this because you called a review that gave it an average rating a much better review. Your case would be much better if you used an example of a review that was negative that you thought was better. Now before I end this video, I want to address this. Animat, I do not intend for this commentary to be a cyber attack on you. I just see several glaring issues that need to be addressed. I hope you can give these criticisms some thought, because I do believe that you can make some very impressive videos. Heck, you've made some alright videos in the past, so I hope you can make more videos like these, and a lot less videos like this one. Well, let's look at these three examples of Animat expressing himself with... A negative review of Norm of the North, one of the most universally despised animated films of the last few years, a top 10 on the worst cartoon to live action adaptations, filled with universally hated movies, and finally, a retrospective on Studio Ghibli which is considered to be the most beloved animation studio in Japan. Yup, Animat is definitely expressing his radical and different opinions here. I'm the Lightning Ripper, and I'm suddenly in the mood to play some Ratchet and Clank. Hey look, Renegade! Your name is forever engraved in this video! Woohoo! And like that, the video ends. Though I could quickly mention how his end slate is outdated as all hell, but... Let's just get the final thoughts over with. Both of you two, do it first. I'm going to be blunt. The moment your commentary came out, I'd want to do a video on it. Right from the start, I knew that it was god-awful. There were countless moments where you were pulling so many points out of your ass that your rectum and lower intestine becomes damaged to hell. Hell, I actually agree that the Ratchet and Clank movie didn't deserve an extremely negative reception. And I actually like the movie to an extent, yet I found so many issues with this video. There are points you could have made, like the Star Wars claim, but you missed all of them. The fact that we only skipped a part of this video once in this entire commentary says a lot on your part on how many piss poor points you made. I don't mean to directly insult you as that was the one who made the most amount of pop shots. I insulted the video because it was that 
fucking terrible. And this was just a complete chore to sit through to the point where I just want to burn the fucking place. Don, no. Just let me give my final thoughts next. Jack, I've seen you attempt to improve your videos with Sonic Month, and it's clear that you have improved from your look at it days. There were one or two points that with a little context from the movie would have sounded fine, but the final product was trash. And I think it's mostly because you tend to get overly defensive on things that you like to the point where no one can even point out the simple issues with them. And it really showed here. I'm not going to tell you to stop liking the Ratchet and Clank movie. From what I've heard from George and Donnie, the film is just okay. But, here's the thing, you could have used your vast knowledge on Ratchet and Clank to disprove the accusations that it was a Star Wars knockoff, but instead you spent most of the video getting defensive, and at times you shoved your opinion down Animat's throat, which made this commentary miles worse. On a somewhat positive note, from what I've seen for your next script, along with the fact that you're getting more than one person to read it, shows that you are willing to improve. Hopefully, this commentary points out the flaws that the polarizing comments didn't. Now, it all comes to me. But, before I start, I'll change the music into something more fitting with my thoughts. There we go. Anyway, Jack, I have nothing against you as a person, but there are those times where you just make no goddamn sense. Now, I will say that from the two videos I've seen from you, I will say that you're better at editing than you were before, and your mic is not an issue. However, things did not change when it comes to your points. You've seen my commentary on One Week Dash, right? At least... That's what I think you did? Well, if you did, how come you seem to have repeated some of the issues that Dash did that I tackled with Jackie? You tried to debate with Animat, but most of the time it was just explain over and over again. You also made it seem like your audience are idiots, saying that they don't know how a skip screen even works, yet you say that Animat is making his fans look like sheep. And worst of all is when you try to butt in during interjections when you don't know what the hell you're talking about and say Animat is wrong when you don't know terms like rendering. Now, you're not wrong by who you tackled. Maybe Animat's video could be flawed, but since there are two commentaries on this video, both of which were tackled by me, tells me that Animat is pretty much a steel wall that is incredibly difficult to even break down. I may not have been involved in the video's creation, but regardless if I did, it's a problem when you did not proofread your script or send it to more people to make sure it's watchable. These were my final thoughts, and I hope to god that when people try to commentate on Animat, they know what the fuck they're talking about. So, what now? Guys! Oh, I've been meaning to ask to Kree. What the fuck are you doing here? No time! She came back! Who? Hey guys, what's going on? Um, I can explain! I come back from the JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, and you did a video on Jack? Without me? This was George's idea! Well, at least he had fun at the beach, right? No, I know what I'll do! Now, George, answer me this. How does King Crimson work? Oh god damn it, not again. Donnie, you should give the answer. But George, I don't know either! Well, I'm not gonna fake die every time. Think of something! Uh wait, I got it! I found out how King Crimson works! <laughs> Well, that was anticlimactic. <laughs>